die Kinderliteratur ist auch systemrelevant. Sie eröffnet Welten, die wir momentan nicht bereisen können. Sie erweitert Horizonte gegen die Enge im Denken. Sie kann uns die Begegnungen ermöglichen, die wir auch It can provide us with encounters that in our daily lives are currently so limited. And it gifts us with stories that give us courage and confidence. Book encounters at a young age may decide whether reading becomes a passionate hobby or whether one turns away from books. So we as a book industry should do everything we can to publish and offer good, no, very good books for children and young people. And this is what committed publishers and bookstores do. They do it with enthusiasm. Even as a digital format, the, children, the German Children's Literature Award remains a core element of the Frankfurt Book Fair, underlining the importance of children's and youth literature for the industry, for the future of the book, and for new generations of readers. Personally, however, the international character of this award is particularly dear to my heart. The award ceremony of the German Children's Literature Award never looked like this. But of course, we were expelled from the exhibition halls in Frankfurt also. We're in Berlin now, but not just somewhere. Happy to have you at home, at the screens, the reading clubs of the youth jury, or in the offices of the partner institutions of the Association for Children's and Youth Literature. Welcome to the award ceremony of the German Children's Literature Award 2020. That children and young adult literature can be a few refuge or a fantastic escape from everyday life or an inspiration. This is something that the weeks when everybody stayed at home proved very well. And also that not enough people and institutions can take care of young people and children. This is why the team of the German Children's Literature Award is very happy to be um, hosted by the Children's and Youth Theatre of Germany, the Grips Theatre. And you can find truly a spiritual kinship between this theater, because both try to provide a stage for stories here and now. They address true problems and face them with courage and creativity. And this is something that helps also in during times of pandemic. And what stays the time the same this year is that we have awards in the categories children's book, picture book, youth book, and non-fiction. And the youth jury is going to award their own prize. Each prize is 10,000 euros. And then we have the special prizes. The special prize for new talents, 10,000 euro again, and a special prize for the lifetime achievement, 12,000 euro. And this rain of money, the award ceremony, and everything of effort behind is organized by the Federal Ministry for Family, Senior Citizens, Youth, and Women. And I would like to welcome the Minister, Franziska Gift. Happy to have you. And thank you that also during times of emergency, you back this award. Of course, it's happy. I'm happy to see you again. How is it for you to be in Berlin now, not in Frankfurt? Well, I'm from Berlin, so it's not an emergency situation for me to be in Berlin, to be honest. But when it comes to the German Children's Literature Award, it's very different. I remember the past years, you know, with a major hall filled with a huge audience, you know, emerged in the ambience of the Frankfurt Book Fair. So this year, we have a totally different situation, but I'm happy that we were able to provide this kind of event anyway. We are at the Grips Theater, an institution providing theater for children and young adults, and German Children's Literature Award is dedicated to literature. So how was it for you to feel that it's so important during the last week to have this award? Well, we had a time where the daycare centers and the schools were closed, a time of homeschooling, also the time of uh, going back to school. And the question is, what do you do? 
if you cannot go outside, if many things, many offers are closed where you go usually in order to be able not to play too much with your computer. You know, well, just you might just want to read a book or the parents that can read out books to their children, inspire them to read books. That was very important, and I do believe that books were helpful for people to um, make it through these times, at a time that was difficult for everybody. And sales um, show that um, the uh, sales went up during pandemic, and as a founders of this award, what is your message to the people who create books, to the publishing houses and to the industry in general. First of all, I would like to thank everybody who enabled us to celebrate this day here today. We have many people who make sure that the prizes can be awarded because we needed a jury, of course, taking care of things. And that, again, this year, read the books, assessed the books, discussed the books. And I would really like to thank everybody for their effort. And I do believe that literature for children and young adults is really a cultural richness, a wealth for our country. So please continue, even in difficult times, please go on. And this award is to make sure that reading that opens world to other open doors to other uh, worlds, that it will always remain fashionable. Because during digital times, you know, emerging yourself into a, a story, you know, staying um, at the page and continuing to read in, instead of moving elsewhere is something that is very important. And we want to promote reading. And so thank you for, to everybody who enables us, enabled us to um, be here. Thank you. So we start with the first categories. We go um, to a abandoned house, to the moon, to geometric forms. These are the nominated books. Sabaschlava Kusi Bussi. Emmy likes to be cut, to cuddle with her parents, but once the uh, relatives comes, kissing is just a disgusting imposition. On a trip to the moon. So during a trip to the moon, a child misses the departure and carefully makes friends with grey moon creatures. Triangle, square, circle. Barnett and Klaassen play intelligently and witty with convention and challenge the viewer in what appears to be a simple plot. The home that was a house. The house that was a home. An empty house in the forest. Who might have lived there? A summer dream that entices you to make your own forays. The ABC picture book. This ABC picture book this ABC picture book encourages you to listen, to look closely, and to read aloud. C. An interactive picture book that provides many suggestions for learning by discovery and just as many blank spaces. So these are the nominees for the Picture Book Award, and Franziska Giffey, the federal minister, is going to take the envelope out of the pile, but just hang on a second, because we have yet another chair that is not filled yet. I don't want to keep that space blank. I would like to ask Professor Dr. Jan Stanken to come up on stage with us. 
wonderful to have you. You um, assessed the nominees and you defined who is going to be awarded. Together with your team, we would like to mention your team in order to honor them. Maren Bonacker, Christiane Bentin, Bettina Braun, Nicole Filbrand, Ulrike Schöner, Professor Dr. Karin Fach, Dr. Renate Grubert, and Dr. Marlene Zöhrer. 579 books from your last year is what you read. You assessed them, you discussed them, and you chose the best children's, young adult, non-fiction, and picture books. Thank you so much for all the work you've done. And now the air is vibrating not in a major hall, but really, truly around the globe, because the nominators join us remotely from seven different time zones that we cover today. One nominee, pair of nominees are not present here, but we are happy to have you here. Who's not nervous? Good for you. <laughs> Who is nervous? Skifai, please, choose the envelope. So we have golden envelopes here. You might be able to see it. And the first one says picture book. So this is the right envelope. About the best, well, they are all wonderful books. And right, congratulations on the nomination. But only one picture book can be the winner of those who were nominated. And it is, in this year, a very special book. published at Nord Süd. Thomas Bruckmann turns around in the kitchen. Who did you look at? Please switch on your microphone. We learned that in our Zoom conference during the last weeks. I'm at the publishing house, North Süd Verlag. <laughs> Congratulations, Thomas Bruckmann. You are the translator of the book. The two people who wrote the book and illustrated the book are um, Mark Bonnet and John Klassen, and they sent us a, a video, and afterwards we touch base with you again. <laughs> Mac Barnett. I am John Clausen. Uh, it is hard to believe that just one year ago, we were in Frankfurt not winning the Youth Literature Prize, and now here we are not in Frankfurt winning the Youth Literature Prize. Life is funny. <laughs> the funny thing. So thank you very much to everybody who, who gave us this award and who, who put the books out in the first place. Yeah, thank you so much to Nord Sud, to the committee, to all of you. Uh, we wish we could be there right now on that giant white couch. <laughs> but we are, we are in the white couch of our hearts. Yeah, it looks the same. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Okay, we would also like to be sitting on a white couch at the Frankfurt Book Fair, but we are sitting on orange armchairs. Thomas Bottmer, you translated the book, actually the three books. Congratulations again. So the illustrations are also very prominent in the book. There's not that much text, so how does it feel as a translator if you have to translate such a book? Do you think, yeah, I can do this in half a day, or is it the other way around. The fewer the words have to be translated, the longer time it takes to translate the individual word. Yeah, the second is true. It is like translating lyrics. It comes down to every word. And then I ask myself, how does it sound if somebody reads it out to somebody? It's very important because that, in most cases, is true. Okay, and in this book, it is about a trio. It's about a triangle, a circle, and a square and you can attribute different attributes to it. Square
Kante has different different meanings in English. In German, you can also say Kante, which is edgy, which comes from geometry. It also stands for strong. Which geometric shape corresponds to your character most? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know. All I can say is my problem that I had was that in English there were genders attributed in the English book, but they don't correspond to German, to the German language. So female wasn't female in German. What do we do with it? Der Kreis, it says in German, so it is male. And in English, it has a different gender, this word. So that was our contribution to the gender debate, sort of. Thank you, Thomas Botner. Please stay with us. I would like to ask the others to come in. And I would like to tell you that the golden momos cannot be sent online, unfortunately. But 10,000 euros can easily be translated online in these times, fortunately. Now is the time where I normally always ask that uh, forget that the photographers want to take a photo of the minister and the winners. I'm not going to forget it this year, but in the end, we would like to take a final photo of all prize winners. So please stay with us until the very end. I would like to talk to Mr. Stanke now. Three books for the price of three books. So quantity probably didn't convince you, but quality. Yeah, fortunately, with the German Children's Literature what we don't award the best bargain, but the best picture book. And it is really convincing. The story, the illustration, everything was very convincing. They use very aesthetical means, and they create a world which is totally new. Because behind these simple stories, they seem to be simple at, on first sight, there are many questions and issues that arise. And they are relevant for young readers for the youngest readers. They have to observe, they have to question things, they have to tell stories. And the clue and the crux of this trilogy is that there are different reception paths. You can read one book, you can switch between the different books, and it is just a wonderfully funny, inspiring and very interesting approach. Miss Giffey, which story would interest you most, the circle, the square, or the triangle? Which book would you read first? Oh, let me put it like this. First of all, I would have to figure out what they do with each other. And I find this very intriguing. I'm definitely going to read them to find out how we can strike a well-balanced relationship between circle, triangle, and square. Well, this is what it comes down to when it comes to gender equality, isn't it? How can we strike a good balance? Thank you. Thank you, Thomas Bodner. All the best. And I will see you later. That is at the end of the award ceremony. And this brings us to our next category, children's books. Between siblings, new friends, and old enemies, stories emerge and poems emerge in the nominated children's books. Lyric Comics. Lyric Comics. Poes, poetry for children in their best years. This innovative, complete work of art playfully generates the appetite for poetry to touch and experience. Freibad, outdoor pool. Every day in the outdoor pool for a whole summer. So going to the pool every day for a whole summer long. The special feature of this warm-hearted children's book is the depiction of the family. Ein Bruder zu viel, Bruder zu viel a brother too much. Der fein the finely woven psychological children's novel gains a special emotional depth through the silhouettes in strong Tiefe. blue and yellow. Frosia Frosia furchtlos, Frosia fearless, about speaking Häusern. chicks and vanishing houses. A story full of bizarre ideas, self-confident children, and crazy entanglements. The 
beste Bahn meines Die beste Lebens. Bahn meines Lebens, the best track of my life. Dieses Debüt This debut speaks in a convincing way and with changing perspectives about Liebe, first love, der sich the art of accepting oneself and standing up for mistakes. Ich bin Vincent, I am Vincent und and I don't have Angst. any fear. Vincent, Vincent is tormented by his classmates, which is why he waits the upcoming class trip with horror. So these are the nominees in the children's book category 2020. So these are the nominees and I like looking in shop windows when it's dark, also in windows of buildings when they are dark and you can do the same on Zoom. You can see people sitting at home. Welcome again. Thank you very much for remotely connecting to this event. Hello nominees. Hello. Miss Minister, Minister, please, the floor is yours. Yes, I can imagine how excited you are. And I would love to present the moment to all of you. And I would love to congratulate all of you on the wonderful books. They are fantastic. And when listening to the descriptions, I would love to read them all. So you are all winners in that sense. But there is one book that stands out and that gets the award, the German Children's Literature Award of 2020. So the German Children's Literature Award 2020 goes to the children's book, Outdoor Pool, an entire summer under the sky. And it is Will Gmeling who wrote the book, Outdoor pool, an entire summer under the sky. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. In this book, you describe a summer of kids, of three siblings that live in a poorer family, and you describe it in a very warm hearted and specific way, but also with enough distance. How do you know all this? That is a good question. I did not grow up in rich conditions myself. We were five siblings in total, and we always went to the outdoor pool, and I still do this nowadays. I am a specialist when it comes to outdoor pools. Therefore, I know exactly what is happening there. The kids that you write about had to get the ticket for the outdoor pool for free, otherwise they couldn't have afforded the tickets. So what are your demands and wishes to policymakers when it comes to kids from poorer families? Well, first of all, reading literacy has to be promoted. That is actually the idea of all children's book authors. So reading literacy definitely has to be supported and promoted. And if a ticket for an outdoor pool became a bit less expensive, it would be wonderful. So reading literacy and cheaper tickets to the outdoor pools. Thank you, Will Gmeling. I would like to ask Mr. Stanke. So a summer in an outdoor pool. I mean, that is something normal. It is not totally exotic. What makes this book so extraordinary for the jury? It is exactly the view on everyday aspects. That's the strength of this book. Because the challenge when it comes to kids in our society is focused on in this novel. The outdoor pool becomes a social microcosm of a summer. Will Gmeling very sensitively and humorously talks about these three siblings and their parents. They cannot really afford much, but the outdoor pool provides them with everything that they need to be happy. And the jury agreed that such a credible and positively written family image is sort of unique. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tanke. Thank you, Mr. Gmeling. Please stay with us also until the very end. And this brings us to the next category. It is the young adult book. When it comes to young adult books, it is often adults that make wrong decisions, or sometimes even worse, they don't make any decisions. And when it comes to action, it is heroes and heroines that are responsible. Here are the nominees in the young adult book category. Electrische Fische. Electrische Fische, electrical fish. 
The poetic language leads directly into Emma's being torn between two countries. And in the end, there's the insight that home is more than anything a feeling. Wie der Wahnsinn mir die Welt erklärte. How insanity explained the world to me, wie der Wahnsinn mir die Welt erklärte. Einen skurrilen Plot, Take ein a bizarre plot, a strong ensemble of figures, spice it up Humor, with a great deal of humor, and enrich it with supply, surprising illustrations. Keine halben Sachen. Keine halben Sachen. Ein literarischer Trip, a literary trip, disturbing, disturbing and fascinating at the same time. Long way down. Long way down. In, einer erzählten Zeit von nur in einer only Minute one minute, Jason Reynolds, Jason Reynolds creates tension and an intensity that leaves hardly any time to breathe. Bus 57. Bus 57. Dashka Slater's, Dashka Slater's carefully researched treatment of real events refutes what it is at first apparent. Kein Teil der Welt. No part of this world, kein Teil der Welt. Angesiedelt in der Nachwendezeit Set in the post-reunification era, the multi-layered novel in provides insights into the organization and strategies of Jehovah's Witnesses. So these were the nominees in the young adult book category, and these are the nominees here. Welcome to everybody. Good evening. Isn't it exciting? I can see the entire family. The entire family is excited. Yes, hello. Hello also to all kids and all families. We are saying hi from Berlin. Hello. Okay, so please lift the secret, Miss Giffey. Okay, young adult book winner. And again, everything sounds very interesting. All the books sound exciting. And of course, the choice was very difficult for the jury, but the German Children's Literature Award 2020 goes to the young adult book, How Insanity Explained the World to Me, published in Kalhanda Publishing House. This is Dieter Zipfel. Oh, wonderful. It is wonderful that you're all connected. I think you have to activate your microphone. Have you unmuted your mic, Miss Zipfel? No, obviously not. It is wonderful to see how people are happy. You have to unmute your mic. Yes, unmuted. So again, congratulations. Thank you so much. It is wonderful. Now, Ran Fliegenring is also there. We asked all nominees to send a video to us, although the super superstitious amongst us don't like doing this, but your video is so nice that we want to watch it. So we're going to watch it and then we will talk to you again. Hello? Hello? Hello, Dieter. Hey, Dieter. Oh, hello. Hi, Brown. What's That happening? Cool. Just imagine. Life of the we are so live months. on the big screen. What? Oh, my God, dude. Won. That means we won the prize. Hello? Hello? Hello, Dieter. Hey, Dieter. 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 Dieter, we have to say thank you. Danke. <laughs> Wie haben Sie das so how did you Die do this to make the toothbrush <laughs> call? I think it didn't really work. But actually, we tried to make it work, and it worked for some reason. It, 
one of your heroes in your book is Mr. Klinge, and he uses very fantastic swear words. And I can read out the swear words, although your son is listening. He says, for instance, the tiny little children's life, you greedy cockroach or shimmering toads. This is how he insults a few teenagers. Do you use these nice swear words in your everyday life? Well, not enough. <laughs> Okay, so where does this Klinger come from and what is his mission? Oh my gosh, I didn't know that I'm supposed to say something now. I'm totally overwhelmed, but okay. I don't know. I cannot really talk. Sorry, I have a very simple question then instead. Why does this Klinger, he's an old gentleman who is a bit quirky and he needs Lucy as a young helper. Why does he always ask her whether she combed her eyebrows? Well, I think this is just one small aspect that shows us what perspective Klinge has on the world. It's a bit quirky, a bit weird. So he looks into Lucy's face, but actually he notices that something is strange with her eyebrows, in his view at least. She definitely didn't comb her eyebrows, but he wants to sort out whether she didn't do it. Last question, because you need time for celebrating, obviously, and the son also needs some time. So Lucy leads a double life, and she always thinks about different situations, how they could potentially involve. Would you like to say something? What do you say about it, dear son? Do you know the book? No, no. I mean, of course, he was watching the video and he recognized it and us. Hey, many people are watching you now. Why not wave? Hello. All right, so Lucy leads a double life and she always thinks of situations that could also happen totally differently. And then it cracks and then he is back, she is back in real life. Where is the border between imagination and craziness or insanity? Well, that is exactly what it comes down to. That is the question that the book focuses on, the book and the encounter of the two. With Klinger, well, for most, it is absolutely clear that he is quirky and crazy and a bit insane in terms of his ideas. And Lucy encounters him, and she doesn't have this category of insanity. It's at least not negative, the word, and therefore she is pretty open to this. And she, in him, without them talking about it, finds somebody who accepts her with all her imagination. Aha, the son is also getting it. Well, so they sort of meet emotionally and um, it is not really necessary to talk about these things. They understand each other without talking much. So they sort of meet in the space between insanity and normality. Thank you very much. Please stay with us and maybe you take the sun, put the sun to bed, but I will hopefully see you later. Minister Giffey, the people that Lucy meets in her own family, they are stubborn um, people, bi or homosexual people. It's not that easy to deal with this type of diversity. You are working with diversity in your ministry. So coming from your specific practical life, do you have a tip, a hint how you can deal with it? You know, this very diverse and oftentimes also fragmented society. Well, I believe <laughs> this is so sweet. Uh, basically, we just want to watch you enjoying the prize. Yes, this is what it's all about. You know, taking a look at what we have in common. And it's a lot about empathy, you know, being able to um, put on someone else's shoes. Uh, no matter if he has uh, a lot of money or what he expects from his life, just a little more understanding for the other party and a respectful way of dealing with each other and treating each other and enjoying things together. That would be a great help. And maybe that would also lead to taking a look at the... Uh, 
bright side of life, even though during these times, difficult times, um, we can take a look at things that um, we can enjoy. And you are doing that. Thank you so much, and congratulations. Karen Flingering um, illustrated the book. So what about this combination? And why did the jury provide space for insanity and give priority to this book? Well, the insanity of our world and the insanity of uh, growing up, you know, he, pro he provides such a fun story about that, you know, things that Lucy, um, happened to Lucy, you know, these bizarre, colorful figures and the cheekiness in her perspective on life. And Dita Zippe um, narrates the story really in a wonderful way, and she approaches the problems of today's young people in a very direct way, um, in a way that is um, very convincing. And in the combination with the wonderful illustration, it is just a complete work of art that you can read over and over again, and you have to read it over and over again until you understand each details and e each nuances. Nuance. Thank you. Thank you to all of you, to Von Fliegenring also. We're going to meet again at the end of this ceremony. Let's move on to the next category, non-fiction, music, colors, and again and again, nature is something that we meet over and over again in the non-fiction book, and that um, is a great fit uh, to the year that focused on Fridays for Future before COVID came into our world, but this is also part of nature. Let's take a look at the nominees. Going to the museum with children. Colors. In diesem Bildwörterbuch this illustrated dictionary contains photographs of objects from Hamburg museums. Darwins Entstehung der Arten. In einem ansprechenden Darwin's theory becomes tangible in an appealing interplay of understandably formulated texts and humorously styled images. A wie Antarktis. Außergewöhnlich ist the visual design is exceptional, combining photographs, maps, comic elements, infographs, and illustrations in a clever and skillful way. Die Natur. Entdecke die Wildnis vor deiner Haustür. Discover wildlife in front of your doorstep. It's a guide to being outdoors and to discover for yourself what nature has to offer. This is what you could call this 380-page nature book. Es steht geschrieben von der Keilschrift zum Emoji. From scripture to emoji, Vitaly Konstantinov um, speaks about the fantastic world of signs and puts together with and around them a bizarre graphic book. It's like a miracle. Wie das klingt. Neue Töne aus aller New sounds from all over the world. Das Buch entpuppt sich this book turns Streich, out to be a stroke of genius, a concentrated load of expert knowledge. Das sind die so these Sachen are the nominated non-fiction ah, books. Warten, and these are the nominees. Yes. Well, take a look. let's take a look at the Menschen, books. And now we would haben. like to say welcome to the people behind those books. Hello, good evening. Frau Ministerin. Ja, die Sachbücher. Minister, the non-fiction books. This is the last envelope on the one side. Well, we have still have the other pile, of course. Welcome to everybody. We're excited. The German Literatures Award 2020 goes to the non-fiction book A as in Antarctica, Avi Antarctis, published by Karl Rauch.
Congratulations, Lena Dorn. You are the translator, and you have a great setup there. <laughs> yes, I'm emerged into the topic. We will continue talking because Daniel Boom was not able to join us, but he sent us a video. We're going to watch that and then we will back with you. Hello. Uh, because you see this video, um, that means uh, we won the prize, so that's good news for us, and thank you very much. I was in Antarctica with my two sons, Yachim and Oliver, and unfortunately this summer Yachim died in accident with tractor. And I would like to dedicate this prize to him, because he teach me a lot of things, and also how I can see the world in new perspective and and what is the important in our lives. Uh, so thank you very much and bye. Our condolences. We hope that your family find a lot of strength and hope. And congratulations, Lena Dorn, you translated this book. Why is Antarctica that is so far away so important for us here? We can learn from Antarctica a lot. And this is one of the reasons why the book is so great and why you can read it again and again. Uh, in Antarctica, some things happen differently from what we are used to. And so it challenges um, our everyday life. You don't have the uh, states in Antarctica, only the sun rises only once a year. What does that mean for your everyday life, for the schedule during the day? Um, you can uh, gain a new perspective on many things you do during life. All the best for you and with the award. And please convey our congratulations and our best wishes to David Boom and his family. I'm going to do that. Jens Stanke, Antarctica is a book on climate, but much more than that. What's, which are the aspects that you liked that for you to say that you want to award the, the award to this book. It is a wonderful book, very creative, translated in an outstanding way. The art of the author is that he compiles facts from different areas, geography, politics, biology, history, and he conveys and um, transports this, this knowledge in such an exciting and interesting way. And this book illustrates also the beauty of a continent that due to the global situation and the climate change is endangered. A as in Antarctica is a discovery book for small, for young readers and also for adult readers. Thank you, Jan Stanke. So these are the nominated and awarded books of the jury of the critics is the, the last year for you as a chair of the uh, jury of the critics. Thank you so much and all the best for you. We move on to the books of the youth, youth jury and they are really special. For them it's all, all about uh, borderline experiences uh, of figures for identif identification and we always look forward to the videos of the youth jury because they turn the histories, the stories into um, theater, and uh, this year they work with elements of animation, and uh, we have the Lesartigen and part of the jury, the Fulda Bücherfresser, the Leseklub Augustino of Waldkirch, the La Reading Club of Friedrich Spee Gymnasium, the Lesezeichen Club Königstein, and the Würzburger Jugendleseklub Lesezeichen. And here is their presentation. Der schreibt sogar ungewohnt, aber total super, so packend. 
The Earth, as you know it, no longer exists. The rift scattered it into 21 arcs, which have been floating like islands in heaven ever since. On the peaceful arc, Anima, where the objects have a life on their own, lives the shy and somewhat scatterbrained librarian Ophelia. Ophelia, you're getting married. What? No. Yes, to the noble Torn von Pole. He arrives tonight. Pack your bags. For a long time, Ophelia has no idea that this arranged marriage is just a big court intrigue. Today, the deep ditch stinks. People throw blankets in, which catch fire in the fires that broke out in the camp. Life jacket, but also shoes that fall apart after the long journey. What is your favorite color? I ask blue, like the sky, says L. Red, like blood, says E. Green, my favorite color is green, I say. Brown, says V. Brown, I repeat. Yes, brown, like mud. When the sun comes out, after days of rain, which has turned the camp into a swamp with mud holes and puddles, then the mud is no longer brown, not in the sunshine. Then the mud glows gold. So I paint the last figure golden, golden for V. My name is Soraya. I'm actually a girl, but to save my family from the shame of a seventh daughter, I lived as a boy for 14 years. Now I must flee, because the Taliban will not accept this. My name is Tarek. My name is Tarek. I'm a nomad. The war is destroying our livelihood, and now the Taliban want to force me to work as a tracker for them. I have to flee to my uncle in Germany. Tarek, run faster. Why are these border guards shooting at us? They know that we are no smugglers. The weather is favorable, he said. He sends us on our journey with far too little gasoline. All this just to save money. And now he's probably sitting in his SUV, sheltered from the wind, putting his legs up, and watching us board as we sink. You know, it's about time you get your own place. Are you kicking me out? You're a joke. You take that back. No, you're always either drunk or hungover. Then go. I said, go away. This is my house. Al Mitchell here. Is that you, Joe? Hello, Mitchell, Mr. Mitchell. We have good news for you. We gained full visitation rights for you on death row, Joe. Thank you. He can't hear you, boy. Take the phone. Shit, dude, you look like 30 and you got a pad already? Shit. The first time I went to Texas, I was bumming around for months. And you? I just camped out. You don't take after me, Joe, that's for sure. Are you? Is she? How's the food? Lousy, dude. Did you really kill that cop? Visiting hours are over. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2 p.m. news in California at AKJ. Our topic today is the continuing drought in the southern part of the state. The situation is worsening rapidly. Today at 1.42 p.m., the water abruptly stopped running in all Southern Californian households. The governor's speech only caused general panic and led to mass pur purchases and unrest. Water, give it to me, give it to me. Good afternoon. As a precautionary measure, the resources of all urban and community water districts are temporarily di diverted to facilities with critical infrastructure. 
Hey, please, it's my first water in two days. Well, everyone hasn't had something in two days. The 57 bus is loud, but not as loud as on other days. Sasha sits in the back, sleeping. She's sleeping while Richard furtively opens a lighter and holds it to the seam of a white skirt. He is black and did that. People expect from us that we misbehave. Of course, it's a terrible crime, but it's also a terrible crime to bring a child to trial as, I as if it was an adult. Okay, not male, not female. I just accepted that Sasha is agender. They did it because she was wearing a skirt. This is not a reason. I'm not a monster. I have a big heart. And I never even imagined to hurt somebody the way I hurt you. Okay, so these were the nominees by the youth jury, and I have to say respect to the youth jury, who with Anne Zülke created this fantastic connection between analog and digital, between slow motion and haptic. It is wonderful what you have done. So these were the nominations, and here are the nominees. Welcome to everybody. Good evening. Are you okay? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Are you all excited and eager? Okay. Federal Minister, please let us know who the youth jury appointed as their winner. Yes. I mean, everything is difficult to digest. So our youth confronts itself with serious issues and challenges. Same applies to the winner book. And the prize of the youth jury this year goes to the book is Edward Moon, published by Mixed Vision. Congratulations. Congratulations, Cordula Zetzmann. You are the translator. Thank you very much for being connected here remotely. Congratulations again. Please unmute your mic, yes. I forgot the most important thing. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I'm overwhelmed. You are the German voice of Sarah Crossan, and you have been nominated various times for the difficult to digest novels of Sarah Crossan. She took you to a Polish girl that was mobbed in her home. She also took you to Siamese twins that have to be separated. And now she is taking you to the death row. So what have you learned? How have you felt during the translations? And what do you transfer into your everyday life? Oh, that is very difficult to say in a nutshell. I mean, we always have to confront ourselves with new topics and issues, topics that are not necessarily at hand. What I learn is there's a lot of inspiration that I can derive from the books because I find it very fascinating how Sarah Crossan in a few words, can say that much. Sarah Crossan writes in verses, a very free metric that she uses. What is important to her and to you? What do you want to transfer and translate into German? And where do you have to make adjustments because you cannot translate everything one to one? Well, that is what I normally know. I cannot translate everything literally. That is something I know from the very beginning. Every chapter, every poem that constitutes a chapter is special, be it in terms of language, be it in terms of the rhythm. And normally I decide this on a spontaneous basis, based on my gut feeling, based on what moves me most in a chapter. Yeah. And then, of course, I have to also figure out what is possible and feasible in German. Please convey our congratulations to Sarah Crossan. Thank you very much to you and have a nice remaining evening. You too. Bye-bye.
Minister Giffey, I wanted to ask you something regarding the youth jury. We have seen what it means to deal with digital technologies and that you can harvest nice fruits. The youth jury members, like other students, schools, and daycare center kids, were pushed into digitization because of homeschooling and the shutdown. It could happen again in fall. So how do you f strike the right balance between digital and analog? Many young people were right in the middle of digitization before Corona. I think the schools have now finally understood that there is a necessity and it doesn't or shouldn't depend on the dean whether you make progress or not. I think that we have to focus on media literacy a lot, but also on protection. This year, we adopted our youth protection law. It is about protection of young people. It is about clear orientation, but it's also about media literacy. We have a huge chance at the moment. We can kick off positive developments. And I think for the young generation, these things are matter of factish. So I think it is a good foundation that we can work on. And this is now also the task for schools. And the federal government has earmarked money for this, hoping that everything is implemented well in the states. Lay a good, laying a good foundation is a nice bridge to the next award, because now we come to the awards that are special. We have the special prize, New Talents. In the team of the special talent jury, we have Sandra Dusche and Professor Dr. Kurwinkel, together with the special prize jury chairwoman, Katrin von papp Rietmüller, and I would like to ask her to join us here on stage now. Welcome. Now, the three nominated talents and their books you have with you, let's take a look at them. Nora Krug, I think, is the thickest book, Home, based on a family album, talks about German history. Yeah, Nora Krug focuses on her own history, on her own experiences with Holocaust survivors. And this is a book, again, on the time of National Socialism. And as it is seen and written in a very personal way, everything becomes very tangible and everything becomes emotional. Can we look into it? Yes, of course. Here is the family tree, and then there are many illustrations in the book, and it also contains many facts. Okay, and the next book is Dirk Pope, Wicked, Abgefahren, a coming-of-age road movie novel, sort of. Yeah, it is a coming-of-age novel, a road movie. The 17-year-old Viorel has to drive his dead mother 2,500k through Europe. He wants to bury her where she was born. It is told in a very quirky and bizarre way, a lot of black humor, a lot of irony. So it is really a wicked novel. Okay, and the third talent is Rike Patvardhan, research group P-Soup. Three kids found a gang of detectives. Yeah, it is a friendship novel. They stick together no matter what happens, and everything against the backdrop of integration, of escape, and of traumatization. Minister Giffey, I think you are now focusing on the second stack of books here. Yes, exactly. So who gets the special award, New Talents? Okay. New Talents, first of all. Hello, New Talents. Oh, yes, I have to welcome the nominees. Sorry for that. Wonderful to have you here. Good evening. Yes, and here we see the poster of the German Children's Literature Award in the background. Wonderful. Thank you also for the stage designers that have done a great job here in Berlin. Okay, so the special award for new talents this year goes to... Rike Patvarham. Congratulations. Rike Patvardhan, you are also surrounded by your family. Please unmute your mic. Maybe it is okay that the microphone is unmuted at the beginning when you start screaming for joy. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you so, so much to the jury. 
that obviously liked my book. Thank you also so, to so many other people that were involved. My long year agent, Susanne Koppel, Anne from of the Knesebeck Publishing House. I have to mention a few, Tatjana Krei, Susanne Scholz, Christiane Nase, Regina Kempe, who is in charge of the illustrations. Without her illustrations, the book would just be half the worth and value. And thank you to my family. They provided me with a lot of support and humor. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. At the end of the book, you say, when a story ends is determined by the story itself. I assume that a story also looks for their heroes and heroines. Why? Did it have to be for Niels, Efi and Lena, the research group Pea Soup? Well, good question. Niels and Efi are actually two egos. I mean, they're both me. Efi is sort of the nervous component, but I also have a quiet and shy component, and that is Niels. And he is the narrator in the story because in order to tell the story, I think Niels was a bit more appropriate. Thank you. Please stay with us. And Katrin von Papp Riedmüller, why did you choose Rike Patwardan? She's still very happy, obviously. So with so many different books, how do you pick the one that you eventually want to award? Well, we decided to choose this book because we love the humor that Ms. Patvanan has just mentioned. She has a lot of humor. The book contains a lot of humor. It's a wonderful book. You can easily read it. It's a book that is very entertaining. It's a very entertaining novel for younger readers. Yet, in its easiness, it focuses on flight, escape, traumatization, so it makes you think. It is a nice connection of serious and humorous elements. Thank you. Have a nice evening. I will see you at the end of the award ceremony. <laughs> Hello also to the family. I can see somebody peeking over your shoulder because we also have the special award for lifetime achievement and it is really a privilege to moderate this award. I had the honor to be on stage in the last years. Volker Füller or Gudrun Pausewang or Klaus Kordon were on stage in the last years, which was a great honor. So who will get the special award for lifetime achievement this year? The minister is not just going to open the envelope and read the winner. No, we are going to have some kind of celebration here in order to increase in excitement. Okay, also for Katrin von Papriet Müller to guess. Now, the person that gets the prize, does she have a trademark, a stunning trademark? Well, what characterizes her is the fact that no matter what she writes, meets with very positive feedback and response. Okay, so she is very successful, obviously. When it comes to lifetime achievement, it implies that she didn't start writing just yesterday. But are we talking many decades? Yeah, quite a few decades. We're talking here when it comes to this author. And who does this person write for? Well, the person writes for basically everybody. It starts with picture books for the very young ones. She also writes children's books and also young adult books. They are also read, by the way, by adults with great pleasure. OK, what about the genre? Is there a specific genre? Well, again, it convinced us that this person is very diverse in terms of genres. She writes realistic stories, fantastic stories, so a very broad range of different stories. OK, so she is obviously able to work in different sections and sectors. What else made the jury decide that the prize goes to this author? Diversity is also reflected in her in the language of the author. So she writes humorous novels. The fantastic novels remind us of fairy tales in terms of their language. So she focuses on a broad range of aspects. She uses a lot of humor, very interesting and funny language. You always have to smile when you write her books, even in exciting places. Okay. All right. So, thank you very much for that. Minister Giffey, please end the miracle or the surprise here and tell us who will get the special award for lifetime achievement. Yes, of course. I'm doing this with great pleasure. And maybe somebody was thinking already of the right person. She's pretty well known. And. 
the special award for lifetime achievement 2020 goes to the author Cornelia Funke. And she is remotely connected from California. Ms. Funke, congratulations. Thank you so much to all of you. Good morning, I think I have to say. It's about 9.30 or something in California? Yes, yeah, exactly. 9.34, to be more precise. Okay, so again, congratulations. Let us talk about your biography. You had different professional stages. You worked as a teacher, as a construction playground, then you were an illustrator, and then you started writing books. The previous jobs, did they equip you with this skill? I think I'm a fantastic example of how good it is to not have a straightforward path in order to discover what you really want to do. When I was working as a social worker, I remember that I was sometimes thinking, was that really correct what I did now? And why don't I want to continue this job? Why do I always want to write? And once you start writing, you notice that you have a lot of experience that is very relevant for writing. And then all of a sudden you notice, hey, the not so straightforward paths are the right ones. So from the trade of illustration to writing, what would you say? How would you describe this process? Well, I try to answer many young authors who ask me, have you always dreamt of writing? I say, no, not at all. I always thought that people who write are either old or very dead, and that it is a magic talent that I definitely don't have. So, illustration was sort of the first step into the direction of telling stories. I started drawing at a very early age, and my parents always wanted me to study art. And they always tried to convince me of that. And then, via illustrations, and because I didn't get the stories that I wanted to illustrate, I ended up in writing. But it took four years until I finally understood that I also find writing as important as illustrating. You are one of the most successful authors when it comes to children's and young adult books worldwide. And your success proves how strong this genre is in literature. You yourself one said, children's books have to be written like adult books, just better. Do you think that children's literature... I don't know if this was a quote from me. I don't really think so. I mean, this quote is not from me because I think that all stories have to be well written, no matter whether they are written for adults or for kids. Okay, but adult literature does not work and function automatically when it comes to literature for young adults and children, I would assume that the lobby is less powerful. What do you think? Well, the advantage of us authors who write for kids is that we write for everybody. If you write for adults, you exclude a certain group of our population. You say, okay, before you turn 18 or whatever adultish means, you are not allowed to read this. We, as authors of children's books, have the advantage that we write for the entire family. We sometimes write for four to five generations. So in that sense, we are the storytellers, which is one of the oldest trades on this planet. Okay, let's move on to real life. The corona year and the Californian wildfires have definitely turned your life upside down, I assume. And in three weeks, we will have American presidential elections. So how did you get through the last months? Well, yeah. We as artists, I mean artists that don't have to perform on a stage, were in an easier situation. I mean, I just want to be here, I want to write books and draw paintings. And I can still do this, despite COVID. And people are more hungry for books and stories in times like today. What was a pity was that I started a program for young artists. They came from Germany, from the UK, and from other countries, and they lived in my small guest houses. We had a wonderfully cozy community here, whether these were musicians, authors, or fine artists. But unfortunately, 
they are now stuck in Europe, at least most of them. I recently launched programs with Colombian festivals and American universities, but I'm missing my wonderful illustrators that were here last year and that wanted to come back. So we are now working on Zoom projects, but I decided because of these developments, to open a second location of my foundation in Germany. And I hope that some of the wonderful illustrators and authors whose books I have seen today will join me there someday. Okay, and part of the prize money, you want to earmark for this, don't you? Yes, exactly. The entire prize money goes there. That is very nice of you. I mean, there's nothing nicer than encountering young artists and watching what they are developing and how differently they work, and it is a wonderful inspiration. So I have never had a more fulfilling and nicer year than last year when they were here in California. And the Spiegelhof, the location in Germany, is going to be a very exciting place, I am sure. Thank you for passing on what you have learned and passing on your talents. Back to you. What will be new from you very soon? There are two new books that were presented on the fair already. The uh, fourth volume of Reckless and a picture Booth, the bridge behind the stars and um, of course those two books are very dear to my heart and I hope they will find a lot of readers because otherwise books are more or less a sad thing. Thank you so much Cornelia Funke, all the best for you in the upcoming weeks and we are looking forward to having you back in Germany. Yeah, once it's possible again. Thanks again. I would like to thank the Minister Giffey, the founder of this prize, the Grips Theatre that is hosting us today. Thanks to the team for the scene behind us, illustrating the theme of last year. We thank the Frankfurter Buchmesse, Buchmesse the Frankfurt Book Fair, because we are closely connected to this fair as an award and on behalf of the Association of Children's and Youth Literature, we would like to say goodbye. Thank you to the audience. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the evening.